Hey, Walter Sorrels back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, are we making the most awesome craft knife ever made? You be the judge. So I've got a project I'm really excited about today. Today I'm going to be making a craft knife. Now this style of knife which features little replaceable blades is often referred to by the trade name Exacto. Uh, though this type of knife is made by lots of other manufacturers besides Exacto. Pretty ho-hum project, right? I mean you can go down to Walmart and buy one for $4.98. Well, the point of this build is to just totally gild the lily, totally be over the top. Damascus steel, titanium, brass, you know, to just take this really basic, simple, cheap object and make a really cool version of it. Now, normally I really focus on the performance of the blades that I make, but in this case, not so much. The point of little craft knives like this is that you can put replaceable blades into them. Not only can you ditch the blade when it gets dull, but you can also put different shapes of blades in there for different kinds of projects. Keeping to the spirit of the actual tool, this one's going to be made so that you can go out and buy the actual commercial blades down at Walmart and they'll fit perfectly into this little knife. I'll begin by forging the Damascus billets from two dissimilar steels, one containing a small amount of nickel, the other which doesn't. This will cause them to etch differently so that the two steels look very different in the final product. The Damascus billet is then twisted to create a pattern in the steel. After the Damascus has been forge welded into a solid billet, I'll forge it down into a roughly round bar. We'll actually be making two knives, both of them from Damascus steel, but one will have titanium accents and the other will have brass accents. Next, I'll turn the rough forged bar on the lathe, turning it into a uniform rod which will form the body or handle of the knife. The knife consists of a handle, a collet, and a collet nut or hood. I'll make the collet next. 
It's turned from aircraft grade aluminum in three sections. The first section will be threaded. Followed by a shank. And then a final tapered section with a taper formed at 9 degrees. The taper of the collet then mates with a similar taper inside the shroud or nut or hood or whatever you want to call it. After parting off the collet, I'll saw out the slot for the blade on the mill. So let me jump in here to mention that if you're crazy enough to want to do a similar project, I've got plans for this whole build, the collets and everything on my Patreon page. If you're enjoying the hundreds of knife making videos I've made for my channel, here's your chance to give back and to score tons of my knife making build plans, as well as plans for a lot of the little knife making gizmos that I've made over the years. All right, thanks. And now back to the video. Next, I'll make two collet nuts or hoods. The first will be made from brass. First, it's knurled on the lathe, then a central hole is drilled. followed by a 9 degree cone shaped orifice which is bored out with a spade bit countersink or boring tool that I custom made for the job. Finally, a small shoulders turn that will fit into a corresponding hole in the Damascus steel handle of the knife. A second collet nut or hood or whatever it's called is made from titanium. First, I mill hexagonal flats using a 5C collet block on my mill. Then the rod is taken to the lathe and the same process of drilling, boring a cone, shouldering, and then parting off is followed just like on the brass part. Next, the finish machining is done on the handle. First, I'll drill a hole. Then a short pocket with a square shoulder corresponding to the shoulder on the collet nut is cut using an end mill. Then the hole is tapped to accept the collet. A little test fit to make sure I didn't screw anything up. 
and everything functions correctly. As the collet screws into the handle, it's drawn down into the conical neck of the collet nut, which in turn tightens the collet, so the replaceable blade can't slip out. Next, the handle's etched in a dilute solution of ferric chloride. After several days of work, the pattern in the steel is finally revealed. Now a flat is milled into the handle on my CNC mill. And the name of the eventual owner, my son, is engraved into the steel. Finally, the Damascus steel handle is niter blued by immersion in a solution of specialized bluing salts heated to over 600 degrees. By varying the temperature of the salts, you can actually produce different colors. So the first one that I do went in at about 550 and came out as a sort of gold color, while the second one, which went in at the 650 to 675 range, actually turns more of a blue color. And here are the final products. Thanks for watching, guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon!